um, convergence between Wi-Fi and radio, cellular radio, is, is happening. Is happening. Is happening. So we we're talking about um, protocols since we're talking technology protocols that make it seamless for the user to walk in and out of a building and and um, not have to register, authenticate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, um, specifically, um, and you know enable this like download of, of applications, download of data. And, you know, I'm going to add to that, though. I, um, Wi-Fi is certainly a, an important part of the small cell, but I'm not as convinced about that. And it's interesting, over in Korea, they did, um, uh, I walked into that Starbucks I mentioned. They had Wi-Fi. They have over 250,000 hotspots on KT over in, uh, in Korea right now. Uh, what they are doing is, um, and they have a place where they have over 5 meg worth of service going through there, they are converting them uh, to LTE. Uh, and the reason they're doing it is the speeds. The LTE speeds blow the Wi-Fi away. It seems a little strange, but it's true. There's no contention. I'm not fighting with another Wi-Fi signal in the next door, and somebody else has got the same thing I've got. I, I don't have an overbooking because of the fact that the cellular is controlling it. It's a license spectrum, so they're able to do that. Uh, they're finding that their speeds are better because, again, as they say, no contention. The, the other thing I've got is, is that um, my battery life is longer. So I'm not saying no to Wi-Fi. I really am not. I think it's a very viable piece. But there's also the concept of the small cell using your frequencies, either a 3G or 4G. Now, the beauty of that is by, by having that, you now have even more control. Because you know the person's there. Again, one of the beauties of, of uh, a small cell or a societal one is the person's registered on your network. And you know that this is Charlie Smith. You can do a lot with the fact that Charlie Smith is in your network and using it. Charlie has rights. Charlie has rights to, let's say you, um, I decide I want to order a movie, Gone with the Wind. It's rather long, and I don't want to download it on the major network when I'm outside. Well, I walk into my house. It's sitting in queue at a mobile cache uh, that's at the cellular company. We're sitting there. We've got it all sitting there ready to go. But we queue it because you're out there and you don't want to use your data for it. You walk into the house or you walk into the business, now you're on a small cell. We send it over the internet to the small cell, download it to your phone, and now you've got it gone with the wind on your phone and you haven't had to pay the data rates on it because you've been doing it on a small cell that's got a better deal for you because you have to pay for it a different way. So there's a lot of interesting opportunities that we'll see with that. The other thing that the small cell does, I'm not a big fan of DAS, um, but let's take an example. Lambeau Field has uh, just put in DAS, Verizon, and it's all that everybody can use. Wonderful, really exciting. Problem is, is that it's already overloaded. This I like, got no signal on it uh, the last game, and Verizon was the only one on it. A little scary. It was a Verizon phone that I was using. Um, so why? Well, there are a couple of problems you run into with DAS. One in particular with LTE is just delay. Um, so uh, going back to to uh, Lambeau Field, the reason I brought it up is, what if you were to put a cache at Lambeau Field and have every camera that's on the field? feedback to that cache. Now with a bunch of small cells that are all just serving a small region, and thus you've got a lot of capacity on your network, you want to watch the end zone, end zone shot. You just click on an app that you've purchased from, from uh, uh, the Packers when you walk into the stadium, and you're able to watch the end zone shot. Oh, I want to see the other side because I want my own replay. I want to see the guy who really was in bounds. Now I'm taking the sideline shot, and I take a look at that. You can look at every angle from the 10 different cameras that are in there by being able to go back to it. But again, the small cell on a, a low bandwidth using uh, type technology, small cells, if you will, LTE, I'm able to get a chance to see the entire game. And local caching allows me to do that. Right, yeah. So obviously, I'm like, you was going to admit there, going to the small cells, I'm supposed to be wide by type of, of, of offering, where you don't have quite as much control over for what's happening on the network. Exactly, and, and it's, it's just contention. You've got, you know, one's a, a cowboy game, and the other one is actually something where you know, sorry, I didn't mean to pick on the pack, the cowards. But in any case, it's one is a group that you control the frequency. Yeah, got it. Got it. Uh, so, I mean, that was kind of a question that, that somebody brought up yesterday when I was talking to him about this topic was, you know, I mean, is cloud a, a, a cellular uh, 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 innovation, or is it just a innovation, or just, it's just a progress innovation? I mean, I mean, because it seems like cloud has got a lot more uh, uh, news a lot more uh, um, uh, recognition with the role of LTE services. Is that just because of timing that cloud is kind of becoming more important to customers, 
Or is, is cloud really a, a high-speed data type of, uh, of offering? Is, is it a 3G thing? Is it a 4G thing? Um, what's, what's kind of the connection between cloud and the network when it comes to the world that time of, of these services? Do, do you carry to wait for that LTE to roll out cloud? Or can you roll out cloud now? No, I, you know, I, I, you can roll out cloud now. There's no question about it. The whole idea is, is that uh, it's, it's a service that somebody else is offering over it. And, and the reason it's getting so much play in mobility is because it takes some of the work off the mobile device uh, and allows you to do more. But it's, it's, we've been using it at home for a while for different services and businesses for different services. But now the ability to be able to have, you know, businesses are going to have their own clouds and they'll have their customer, their employees want to be able to get to that cloud that's local. You might not actually provide the cloud, but what you might do is through the idea of having a cell phone and having a small cell in the building controlling the environment, you can say that if a employee, which we recognize their phone, is on the campus, they have access to these files. If they are not, they do not. So I mean, there's there's a lot of different pieces of it. No, you don't have to definitely don't afford it to support you. Yeah, no, I I agree. Um, to your question about um, you know why now, right? So you know, cloud is you know, being around for a long time in the IT space. You know, computing storage. And all that, um, and it's, it's evolved rapidly, and there's tons of applications out there, and infrastructure, and platform, and software as a service. Um, it, in the mobility world, why why was the cloud um, as used before? Mm -hmm. you know, before you, you know, talk about LT, sure. um, you need capacity. Mm -hmm. You know, you need capacity for to deliver these applications with, with a great quality of service. So, you know, the development in, in the wireless domain and then the cloud evolution. Started or converging, which is converging now. Uh, but if, you know, if you talk about um, offering one application on like push to talk, you can do that now. You don't have to wait. You know, you don't have to build an LT network to do it. You can do that efficiently. But while you're at it, you might want to look at that data center or that cloud and see what else is there. Maybe some of the applications have been around for a long time. You know, Microsoft CRM or security applications or something that we take for granted, the email. They're, they're in that data center because that data center provider, in order to make himself um, uh, you know, profitable, you know, can't can't just operate a push to talk service. Mm -hmm. So there are other things that you can you can offer at the same time. And uh, again, for that you don't really have to have Okay. Uh, I will lose time for questions. Do we have a few more questions to go with? But uh, if anybody has any questions at this point for our uh, panel members or for think about some. Yes. Yeah, you talked about the small cell advantages and those type of things, but I mean, isn't the RAM the most expensive side of this? I mean, I mean, I don't understand local cache is important from the huge experience and, and backhaul, but oftentimes it's, it's usually this, <coughs> the RAM resources that everyone's fighting over, right? The, the RAM you mean the... in the... And the cellular, the cellular network. Radio, actually, you're, you're talking radio access now, right? You say we're fighting for them. No, I mean, but I, I guess when you were talking about the differences between Wi Fi and using small oh, circuits. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the cost advantage of, 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 of dipping into your RAN, exactly. which is possible, of course, because the Wi Fi is somewhat free to an extent. Exactly. But, yes. but you do lose like, that QoS aspect of it. So I guess there's a balance of it. Is, is there a cost benefit then, um, or a cost challenge in, of, of doing, of, of enhancing or of, of enabling more services over your RAN? increase capacity, you have to probably invest the money in doing this. No, I mean, the reality of it is, is where, um, if I'm doing a small cell, uh, it's not going back to my switch. Yep, yeah. So, it's it's coming back over somebody else's internet uh, connectivity. It does come back to my, my location, but immediately goes off my network, you know, once I, once I hit the, uh, uh, and, I, and I have that quality service piece. Plus, as time goes on, data mining and some of the other pieces come in. So no, there's, there's not. So, so do, you, do you do you think the small cells will go out over Wi-Fi for video? Uh, I think if if Korea is an example, yes. Yeah. Um, I think they're a good combination. I think they, they they have value for both. But I think from a carrier's perspective, um, I think that the this is my personal opinion. I know a lot of people disagree with me on it, but I think that the Wi-Fi is a is an interim step for a tremendous crunch we've got. We've got to fill it. But um, uh, I have seen a solution, by the way, again out of Korea, where they marry Wi-Fi and LTE 
and achieve 100 megabits worth of uh, bandwidth. Uh, so that's another way to play the game. I think any any access technology is good, but I, um, uh, from my standpoint, I like LTE because of the fact that ARP are using the small cylinders I control it all. Jim, I can comment uh, in two ways here for well, about two points. So, um, you, you know, when you, you build a RAN, you're right, the RAN is expensive, right? Um, but um, you got to fill, fill the pipes, whether it's spectrum pipes or however you measure the pipes, in order to reduce your your cost per gigabit of, of transmission. Yeah. You know? So th this is how you start, you know, that's one way to increase revenue is really to fill those pipes effectively. So, I mean, and the, the networks are not fooled everywhere, you know. 10% um, of the cells carry 8% of the traffic. Right? Right. So there, there's a lot of capacity, believe it or not, that is available to Rob's point. Um, my, my second point, again, listening to you two here, um, video, you know, I, I think LT advanced is going to be, LT advanced in small cells or, you know, in LT advanced space are going to be like, I can't wait for them, kind of thing, um, for delivery of video. And imagine delivery of video to rural areas uh, where there's no DSL and um, you, you need to deliver unicast, unicast bases. Um, imagine, you know, migration of population here and there, you want elasticity in the system. And, um, you know, with caching, with uh, distributed content delivery networks, which again, we, these are concepts for the, you know, evolved cloud. Um, LT Advanced married with these new concepts are going to create yet another paradigm. So we'll be talking in two years, just like we're talking today, yeah. instead of asking about LT and Wi-Fi and cloud, we'll be talking about LT Advanced and, and really rich video. There is, you know, the, the, uh, the small cell forum is, is talking about uh, uh, actually putting caching in small cells so that you would have some stuff going on with that. Uh, the other thing you go into is, if all companies, right, they're saying 80% of all the traffic is going to happen on a small cell. So in, in some future date, of course, it's kind of like saying that I'm going to lose 100 pounds sometime in the next 300 years, I probably will. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll check with them. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I know I was, uh, you know, uh, like, kind of like Rob said, I mean, you know, Wi-Fi doesn't be a nice interim step at this point, but, but small cells are kind of the future when it comes to, because the interiors do want to have that kind of control when it comes to cloud. The benefits there just seem like, they're, you know, it just seems obvious that you want that, to, if you want to get off these localized services, you need that kind of control to do it, and small cells seems to be the way to go. And I, I know I was talking to NTT a couple weeks ago about this, and, you know, they're really big in the Wi-Fi space. Um, and they're pushing a lot, but you know, at this point they're saying you know, all their Wi-Fi deployments that they're trying to put out there now, they're trying to have all the vendors put small cell technology in those deployments too, so that's ready to go. Yeah. So that's so if, if people come to them without both in the same package, they're not going to talk to them. So they want to have both there because the, the migration eventually will be to all, all small cells. So. And, and since, since we're on a, kind of on a RAN topic, you know, we talk about cloud in terms of applications, cloud applications, cloud applications. But how about cloud RAN? We hear about that. You guys have heard about that cloud RAM, you know, cloud RAM software defined networking. That, that's that's a thing of the future. That's uh, that's going to enable again this elasticity and you know ability to uh, to serve anywhere and at any point in time, bandwidth and multi Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Great. Yeah. 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 In the RAM domain. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I guess maybe kind of a final topic to look at is, I guess, what's an action plan right now for, for carriers who might be looking at going to the cloud? Uh, maybe, maybe Rob, I guess from, from a carrier's point of view, if you provide some uh, advice uh, to, to some small carriers out there who are looking to go, go with a cloud type of deployment, you know, what would be your, your advice to them as a challenge you guys have seen? Or what, what's your general advice to them for those carriers at this point? Well, I think there are a lot of good uh, operators, different uh, vendors out there that are offering some some solutions. I think right now you have to do your homework. Uh, talk to your other carriers and find out what they're doing so that you're not all retracing the same steps. Um, uh, in our case, you know, we're, we're talking to a number of people. I mean, the one that Ericsson is putting out uh, for the push to talk, and they've got a couple other applications on their cloud. So we're going to bring those guys in. We're going to be talking about it and seeing what's available. Uh, there are other companies who we heard from Avenir, uh, talk about has some uh, possibilities in there. We've got some stuff from the uh, uh, Interop, which is one of our providers. And we want you guys work with today. Um, you know, work with 
somebody get back to and say, are you doing anything in the cloud arena? Are you doing anything in the rich communications services arena? The problem I've got with a lot of this, though, is you get to uh, terms like rich communication services and that they leave it like that's supposed to be something you understand. <laughs> You know, no, I mean, it's rather massive, and we're not all going to roll out IMS, but we need to understand what the physical things are you can do with a rich communication service. What is the service at the end? That's what you're trying to get to. So don't be afraid to ask your vendor, okay, great, you've got this. How am I going to use it? And if they come back to you and say, we can do video conferencing, you go, I can do video conferencing already. So explain why is this different, and push them and push them and push them and get the answers to these kind of questions. Because, quite frankly, you'll need to know it. Um, Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, and uh, T-Mobile are not sitting on their heels. Uh, they are moving aggressively forward on this stuff. Um, and by the way, do go into their stores and do see what they're selling. Um, it's a pretty good thing. Um, but that's that's where you're really at, is you've already got vendor relationships established with first order those guys, and ask them what they're going to do and how they're going to help you, and how they're going to make it so you can do it incrementally. Um, that's Make sure the business model is there. Make sure that it makes sense for these small guys to, to, to make those steps. So that's the important part of it. And and for vendors, you've got to, you know a message to you is you've got to make it incremental for us. Don't uh, put in a big roadblock at the beginning. I had someone one time told me that to get on their system, be happy to do it. All I got to do is pay them three hundred thousand dollars. I said, well, thank you. Look right there. Let's go on. We'll talk about the weather. Um, you know, if I'm putting on fifteen or uh, or a hundred customers, I can't. You know, I don't know that I'm going to sell 10,000 of these things. I don't know if I'm going to sell 15 of them. But give me a way to get into it incrementally, and I'll get this opportunity. Good point. I guess if you had some, you know, advice to carriers, you know, if they're looking to do this, you know, what would be, what would be something like Erickson being the offer to, to carriers at this point? Yeah, so um, as far as, you know, recommendation or my thoughts here, is, um, I think every, every carrier needs to look at their market, and they know the market. I mean, they they're local, right? The local presence, but they really need to look um, at potential opportunities in the market. And just don't limit yourself. You know, don't think just because there's a cable operator in the area, there's nothing you can do video-wise. There you go. Look at everything. You know, typically um, regional carriers cover areas that you know are not huge, right? So um, you, you can. Do that homework, do that analysis, and and then bring up those thoughts, those ideas. Nothing is crazy, nothing is stupid, you know, absolutely nothing. And bring them to forums. You know, the forums or for are becoming increasingly important. Too. Um, so we talk about um, for 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 devices, right? All the time. You know, you got spectrum uh, challenges, so we need to get together, a number of operators, and drive devices. Well, the same thing with cloud, and the same thing with how to monetize your network. Mm -hmm. um, and there's there's four like you know CCA, um, ACG, and then of course your vendors. Your well, vendors should create those opportunities for you. Let me just add to that. I, I think the one thing we've got is we don't know what we don't know. Um, so it is important we know our customers have, but we don't know what all these services are. So I cannot overemphasize the importance of a CCA and getting together uh, with other members of this association and saying, okay, what kind of services are out there? I, when I first started in this industry back in the days of just telephony, I served on the national, um, uh, USDA had a committee that was called uh, a National Services Advisory Committee. And what we did basically was looked at all the new services. We saw this rather interesting thing called the internet. We thought, what the heck is this thing? But I looked at it and I said, wow, this thing can actually replace all of our private lines. And the other guys in the room were going, yeah, you nuts? I said, oh, really good. Um, and by going to this kind of, you know, this meeting of industry experts, I got a chance to see what was coming down the pipe. So don't ever sit back and not go to these kind of conferences. Get involved in forums. I'm a member of the uh, Small Cell Forum. And uh, you, know, you can walk in. I walked into the group and I said, uh, you know, I'd like to be involved in the forum. Of course, they immediately came back, no problem, it's going to cost you X number of dollars to join. I said, I can't afford it. But I'm brilliant. I'm a small company. I'm a cooperative. <laughs> <laughs> you really want me to be here. And uh, they said, well, you know, we would like to have small companies involved. We'd like to be able to say we represent small. It's amazing how people really want to 
say that the small guy is around their side. You know, the farmers and the, uh, the workers are behind us, you know. So you walk in and you say, hey, I'm going to add value by being here. You'll be able to say that you're serving the small guys. And if you get the right person in the group, they'll open the door. So we're paying our membership fee, which is nothing, um, to be a member of the Small Cell Forum. But we're getting a lot of value out of it. And they're getting value out of the fact that we're coming in as, as a small carrier and showing the difference that is between the 7 and 8. They also like the idea of having more members that are operators. So there are a whole lot more of us than, than just one at and one Verizon, you know. So now they've got 45 members, uh, even though two of them make up 99% of all people, you know. But they look better by having 45 members. So join the forums, get involved in these industry things, uh, read RCR. I mean, you know, this is how you do it, right? You like the I That's great. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Um, I appreciate it. And like Andrew said, it seems like too at this point, the, the important thing is to not be afraid to ask questions. I mean, obviously, you know, cloud is still a pretty new topic to a lot of small carriers, even big carriers, and no one really knows what what the cloud can actually bring. There's so many possibilities there that you know, even your craziest idea might actually work. I mean, there might, might be a good business model there that, that can really drive it. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Seems to be really the, 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 the theme right now. Just get out there and be aggressive about it, and don't be afraid. So uh, again, before we wrap up here. Any final questions for our two panel members? Anything? Any applause over there? Is that what we saw? Well, uh, well again, well, I want to thank our panel members. Please join me in thanking our panel members. Uh, for <laughs>